Hey, Greg, can we get an update on uh, Javier? Uh, I know he said two to five weeks. Um, is that your timetable as well? And also uh, Douglas Costa. Uh, with Javi, he is, yeah, he's in, he's in the treatment phases still, and then he's got to go through return to play. Uh, I don't know exactly, again, two to five weeks is a long range. Uh, so our anticipation was a grade one uh, hamstring strain, which is 10 days to a couple weeks. And then you see when on the return to play, how long it takes him to get back to, um, yeah, like, maximum fitness, doing all the things he needs to do for, for match performance. So uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know if that's two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. I'm not sure. But right now he is still in the treatment phase and then he'll start to make his way out on the field to do the return to play stuff, hopefully by the end of this week, beginning of next week. And uh, Douglas Costa? Yeah, Douglas uh, is calf strain. Um, it's soleus strain, so that was, he was having some tightness in the calf a couple weeks ago. Uh, upon MRI, we saw that there's a little something, edema there that we had to deal with, so he is probably a couple more weeks, potentially. So we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll see again on his progression. Hey, Greg, how are you? How are you? Nice hat. Uh, does it it's bother really you out. that? It's really, the weather is terrible. Yeah. Out there, you know? yeah. <laughs> Does it bother you that like Javier is so open like on Twitch to be talking about like his injury and how long he's gonna be out when he said like two to five weeks or is this something that doesn't matter? No, it matters. It's uh, you know for us things like that are internal and for club release. Uh, so that's been shared. Uh, I think at the end of the day, players sometimes get out in front of it and they want to let fans or their people know kind of how they're doing because people might be asking a question, but. Uh, ultimately, there's a there's a way, a time, and a place to give that because it's also about the opposition. It's about game management, game prep, all those kinds of things. So um, there's a lot of pieces to it, but it's it's not earth shattering uh, in this situation. But uh, if, you know, in different circumstances, these things can be very important information that you give to the other team or give the opposition or someone else that you don't necessarily want to be doing uh, all the time. That's for sure. Hi, Greg. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, you've brought in Rizal and Caligari in the last week and a half or so, uh, just your thoughts on what it is that they're going to bring, what you're expecting from them, how soon you're expecting from them, okay. et cetera. Yeah, I mean, with, uh, with Erdi Rozel, he is an experienced defensive midfielder in our league. Um, he's won a championship. Uh, he's, you know, a guy that he, he understands MLS, and he's been successful. He's a competitor. Uh, he understands our style of play, uh, you know, having spent a couple years in, in many years, I guess, in Kansas City, coming through Barcelona system again. Uh, he understands the value that we have on that role and that position and the movements that we, we seek. Uh, so he gives us some added experience and depth in the position, uh, gives us maybe some versatility at times if we really felt like we wanted to let Gaston be a little bit freer from time to time, then that's something we could do and have Uri sit there. You know, with uh, we also have Adam coming through, and with Adam having you know most of last year trying to still recover, we want to give Adam also some space to continue to grow as a player this year and to make sure that he has the freedom to get some games. Even with the second team, he's not always there to just cover somebody, but he has the freedom to make sure he gets matches this year because he didn't get many last year. So Yuri provides us with a lot of lot of things. He's also a great leader in the locker room and on the field. He's a super competitor, uh, so it brings uh, just another level of edge in the training environment sometimes, which has been, which has been great. Um, as far as uh, Lucas, a uh, player we've, we've watched for a while. Again, when you know a guy like Julian is every window, there's a chance that something might come up and, and an opportunity that where he might go. You, we've been kind of out in front of this scouting. Uh, Lucas guy has been in our radar. Um, so we, we've seen him. He's, uh, He's a versatile right back. He's played in, in many a professional game down there in Serie A and, and is vetted in terms of the a high level experience. But he's versatile. He's not necessarily a flyer up and down the line similar to Jules, who was really like a runner. Uh, Lucas is a guy who can play, who can invert. He can go inside. He can play outside. He's um, he's got a different type of like education for the position, and he's a tif different type of right back. But his timing to get forward is very good. Uh, the quality of his service is consistent and it's good. Um, and defensively, he's got 
he's got very good instincts. His, his attention to line, his relationships, his decisions are all very solid. So we feel like we're getting a young player who, again, has been vetted in, the, in a great environment and has a great education for the game and feel like he can step in and help us right away. Uh, where is he in terms of getting here? Visa process. Um, gosh, I don't know. You know, I always hear when these things start. Ten days to two weeks, sometimes a year and a half. You know, depends on depends on uh, who you're asking. Okay, and uh, Uri is here. Uri is here. Yeah. Is is he set to play this yeah. week? Yeah. He, he's he's ready to go. Everything is clear with him. Okay. And our in terms of uh, between now and the end of the window, uh, where, what else are you looking to bring in? What else are you looking to improve with? Yeah, we're, we believe we're still three pieces potentially, uh, additions. So uh, we have some solid resources and some different things that we can move around in our roster to continue to increase the quality, increase the depth. Um, again, uh, we, without a summer international window, we, we wanna do things right and when we can in this window, but we also have internal options if we wanted to make moves inside the league in the summer. So. It's a little bit of gauging. We want to make sure we get the right people. We like where we are. Uh, we have some targets. We're in discussions, and we still feel like, again, like there's two or three moves that are going to happen between now and and um, within the next month. Uh, speaking of a year and a half uh, from a second ago, uh, do you have any updates on Fry Mutatu? And then maybe, uh, not to get ahead of the yeah. question, but maybe uh, are you in a situation where he's someone that you might be looking maybe the summer more window or maybe just to get them in before that deadline? Uh, so we have had some communication uh, from him, from the immigration process with Fry. Uh, I think given the circumstances, he they needed him to wait out a certain amount of time before they could run him back through the process. I feel like the message was we've, we've hit that amount of time and now it is basically resubmitting the paperwork and all those kinds of things to get him uh, hopefully here. Uh, so we are cautiously and hopeful, optimistic that he will, uh, he'll be back here before the window closes, before everything. Um, and I don't even know if he's, uh, if there's a window related with, to this. Um, but, um, we believe we'll have him here hopefully pretty soon. And, and really it's an assessment for I to get going again, to get matches. Uh, so between the, you know, first team training session, second team game match environment, See just to see where he's at and to you know get him back acclimated and inside the group and team. I mean, it would just be great to see him really after all of this and and see where he's at. But uh, hopefully that will be soon. Yeah. Hey, good afternoon, Greg. Uh, just two quick questions. Um, could you clarify if, if Ricky does he fall under the young DP uh, category or is he going to be a regular DP? Um, so the way the way the DP structures uh, work is. You have the option of three senior DPs. If you go three senior DPs, then you only have access to one youth fund spot. If you go two senior DPs and one youth fund DP, then you, sorry, youth DP, then you have access to three youth fund spots. Or you can go two senior DPs, one restricted DP, and still have access to the three youth fund spots. Does that make sense? So Ricky moves into uh, into the what we call the restricted DP spot, which which then still keeps alive our three youth fund spots. Uh, so, and right now we have we have Efra, we have um, Dayan, uh, and we have Caligari, or and the possibility of making an adjustment inside of that to potentially add one more youth fund and move someone over into a TAM position. So we have some flexibility. That's kind of my point. Uh, with Ricky, he will go into what currently is that restricted spot, which allows you to keep open those three. So it's the restriction is basically you're like a you're at a max TAM number, but you free up that TAM money to spread it out across your roster. So MLS budgeting 101 is it's a four year course. It's not a yeah. five minute course. I figured I, I figured I'd ask. You. I, think, <laughs> I think I'm at the watch the video to see what you said. Yeah, to understand. Good, good luck with that. Um, yeah. So with that potential spot open. Are you, how likely is it to see another Galaxy player come in within the few weeks or before this next month? Yeah, we definitely are. Uh, we definitely have some solid resources. You know, with Ricky shifting into the DP, it, it opens up uh, some some TAM resources for us. Uh, it also we also have some flexibility in terms of utilizing or or utilizing another youth fund position potentially, uh, and we still have some 
allocation money that we were that we received from Julian's sale and things like that. So, again, I I, I think there's two to three potential moves here within the next month. Um, if we make two, it's probably because we're saving a little bit money for some internal flexibility over the summer. Should we need some of that? So. Um, that's what I think it will occur as we as we move through the next month and change. Yep. Hi, Coach. Hi. Hey, how are you? Um, on the field, tactic, tactically, how much does it affect your initial plans not having Javier? We know that in preseason you tried with the two strikers up front. We know yeah. you've been playing the 4-3-3. Um, were you were you expecting to see that from the get-go, but now without Javier, what can we see from the team until Javier comes back? Yeah, you know, I think I've said this for us. I, I don't think the two forward system is the answer for our group. Again, um, there's ways to play with two forwards and still control the middle of the field. Uh, but I think for us and the way we want to play, it's important that we dominate the middle of the field and we control possession and we have good numbers. Um, so with there's times where we will use that. I don't think it's the answer for us on a consistent basis. We looked at it many of times and, and I think every time we looked at it, we've not been the same version of what I would like us to be and what I think is our best version of us. Uh, so with, with Javi out, then Dayon steps in and he fills the role and he has an opportunity to, to grow as a starter inside of our team, which is a great uh, challenge for him this year to take another step as a, as a pro to be able to lead the front line for 90 minutes and maybe for two to three, four or five games or however many this season uh, will play out for him. So that's, this is a great step for him in his process. Uh, you know, when Javi comes back, I think we'll be getting into a series of where we have a ton of games this year, and between the two of them, we're going to need them to to carry the load for us. And and then Preston is another guy who's had a great preseason, who is just a handful to deal with. So we feel like we have three really viable, hard to deal with strikers who can put the ball in the back of the net. And like I said, sometimes we may use two together, but primarily, it's not the vision that that we have for where we're where we're headed right now. Now we're going to take some questions from Zoom. Go ahead, Tom Bogert. Ooh, thank you. Thanks for taking the time, Greg. Um, I know that you just kind of ran through the cap ramifications and, and the thought process behind Ricky being the third DP. So um, if there's anything else you wanted to kind of expand on that, feel free. But but I guess the, the next part of that is, given how quickly Ricky settled in and proved his, his value as one of the kind of the better players in this league, do you think that there's going to be, I guess, talks for a new contract coming up that would then complicate this situation of having him as a max tan player rather than, you know, uh, unrestricted DP? Yeah, I mean, it's possible. Obviously, he's a player with uh, a lot of quality. Um, you know, and in a short amount of time, six months, he's quickly proven, I think, to people that he can impact games. And, you know, I'm hearing whispers around the league of a guy who might be in the MVP candidate. Uh, group to start a season. So um, if he continues to perform, then I, I would imagine there will be a knock on some doors about uh, contracts and extensions and progressions and all that stuff. But right now we're all focused, including Ricky and everybody, is having a great season uh, and trying to, um, again, take another big step forward as a group and for him to keep growing as a player and keep impacting games and helping us uh, to move forward. So but I think that's that's the right process. If um, you know if things keep going in that direction, I think that's the next the next step. Thank you, mm -hmm. Josh Guessman. Go ahead. Hey, Greg. Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Um, just wanted to know sort of your feelings with the game being canceled. Uh, what what did that whole sort of thing lead up to? How did, how did the guys handle it? And and does it change anything with how you approach Dallas, knowing they've already played a game? How how it played out, um, we were actually Friday morning in a meeting with the starting group going over defensive set uh, set piece responsibilities, also going through a couple of tactical things that I wanted us to be attentive to, looking at some video and uh, some different things. When there was a knock on the, the video room door um, and somebody pulled me out and said, hey, the game is going to be postponed until another date. And I walked in as the set piece meeting was going in and stopped uh, Dan Couchman, who was going through the defending set pieces and said, guys, there won't be a game, so you don't need to worry about this right now. And uh, there was a lot of disappointment. And um, it's a group that has put in a lot of work for, you know, for the eight weeks. They were prepared. They were focused on this, the game that was coming up. Uh, they were looking forward to it. Uh, I felt the 
the energy during the course of the week leading up to the game felt like the playoffs to me a little bit where when you try to do training sessions, you can tell that there is really an intention on the weekend and the game and it's like just to like just get me to the game kind of a feeling. And uh, so obviously when they heard the news, there was disappointment inside of that. Um, so what does that mean? We we trained hard that day no matter what. We gave them a couple of days off uh, and we came back. Uh, with the mindset that um, we have to have the same intensity and the same mindset as we go to Dallas. It doesn't change our approach to Dallas. We're going to play Dallas how we would have played at Dallas no matter what. Um, the difference is Dallas has one match under their belt and has felt that a little bit. And, and for us, it's now coming off of a, what essentially is a bye week and trying to get ourselves right up to speed immediately on the road against a team that has one game under their belt. So um, I think our guys are more than eager to play because nine weeks of preseason is just – uh, it's too long, uh, so there's a eagerness to get on the field, and I can again feel that this week. This week's been a little bit weird too, just with weather and everything else, just trying to uh, to get through our normal preparation. But in the end, again, I can feel the emotion of just get me to Saturday. I'm looking forward to getting uh, getting this thing started. So, we're thanks, Greg. We're taking one last one from Zoom with Alex Reese. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, Greg, um, you guys acquired Ricky in the middle of last season. Um, was the intention always uh, to make him a designated player or was that something that recently came about this offseason? Thank you. Well, the the intention was uh, for him to come and play and um, there was the opportunity for him to, with production, with quality, with showing what his capability of was to grow into that position if if and when one opened up and he was doing the job that he was – you know, we all kind of thought and expected him to do. Um, and he came and he earned it is what it comes down to. Uh, the spot opened up, he earned it. And uh, so that's kind of the next natural step. It also makes sense for us in terms of how we're shaping the budget and, and the flexibility that we can get out of the situation in terms of timeline. That's one of the biggest reasons why now and maybe not down the road or in the future, but uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility inside of our roster building for where we are in the moment. And then we'll take one final one here with Damian. Hey, Greg, you you mentioned Adam Saldana earlier and also Preston there. Do you have a, in your mind their role for this season? Is it spending time with the first team or sort of shuffling back and forth between first and second team? Yeah, I mean, both both guys have been in in the training environment every day. So they are around the first team. They're in the first team. Um, but at, at the same time, we don't want guys just training in the first team environment and not playing games all season. So... Uh, we our anticipation is that we'll probably be in 50 plus games hopefully this year or close to 50 games which is a lot of opportunity for a lot of people uh, and for those guys to take another step forward Adam unfortunately lost a bit of a year last year but for Preston is to keep taking a step forward in his his development and growth as a player he's had two now seasons in in USL championship where he's he's scored with uh, consistency and last year he played in a game against Chivas Guadalajara with us and he looked very good in that game. And so uh, it's to, to provide him with another opportunity to grow as a player and continue to, to move his pathway forward. And so what will his role be? Well, it's hard to say, but we expect him to be on the field and to give us some, some solid minutes, minutes over the course of the season. And the roles are always dependent on how guys in front of you do and how, uh, how the team progresses and how many games we have and how how things play out. So, but uh, we have them around the team because we expect that they will play a role in the season. Thanks for your time, Greg. All right. Thank you, everyone.